Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about models and concept adapters. We'll talk about how the prompts that you use and the way that the underlying models were trained ultimately control how effective your prompts are going to be at invoking the type of content that you want to generate in the tool. A key concept to recognize here is that prompts are not universally effective. You might have a prompt that generates amazing outputs for one model and is extremely ineffective at producing anything that you'd want to see in a different model. This is because the underlying models are associating the concepts in the images with the words that the model trainer tagged those images with. As of this video, it's pretty rare to find a model that has all of its training data openly available. And you're typically pretty lucky if the model trainer gives you a decent set of instructions for how to prompt that model. This is also one of the reasons why training your own model is so powerful, because you actually understand what words you want to use to describe the pieces that you're training it on. And especially if you're an artist or a creative that has the capacity to generate new training material, whether that's by drawing it, taking photos, or creating 3D renderings, you have the capacity to really fine tune and treat the model as your own. We won't talk about training in this video. Primarily what we're gonna focus on is the difference between different models, showcasing how they can influence the generation process, and talk about concept adapters or LORAs as they're commonly known to help give you a good foundation on understanding the tools in your toolkit. The model that we're using right now is one that I chose to highlight primarily because it is so vastly different than the general purpose models that I normally use in my videos. The Animagine XL model is an anime inspired model that was trained on a data set that has a completely different tagging mechanism than most of the other models use. It's very specifically focused on anime and the tagging system that it leverages for its data set has created a different prompt style for these types of models than you would normally use in something like Juggernaut. Some of the recommended settings from the model creator, which include terms like masterpiece and best quality, they are not general prompt terms that will always make your images better. Because this specific model was focused on training on a data set that had images tagged as a masterpiece or best quality, if they were good, those terms are now effective at triggering that type of style. It's important to recognize that there is no perfect prompt that will work across any and all models because each model has its own language. So I'll go ahead and set a random fixed seed here and we'll go ahead and generate our character. I'll go ahead and increase a couple of these tags and we'll see what we get. All right, so most of it was there. I'm sure I'm not doing this uh, model justice because most of the time when I see people prompting, the prompts are much longer for this model. But I think you get the general purpose or the general idea here, which is this generates anime and you know we've got some of these tags being used. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch to my Juggernaut XL model. The Juggernaut XL model does not respect these types of tags. It doesn't really know what these concepts are and it's really, designed for different use cases like photography, but I'm not going to change any of the prompts. I'm just going to showcase what happens when the same seed is used with the same prompt on a different model. You know, overall, not too bad. I wouldn't say uh, it's the best image that I've ever generated with this model, but you know, it picks up a lot of the same terms. I think the key point here is masterpiece best quality isn't really going to be doing a whole lot for this model. If we take those out and generate the same image, I expect it to be very similar. Yeah, actually it's, it's even better when we take those terms out, I would argue. And if we were to add other prompt terms like photography terms that accentuate what has been trained in the Juggernaut XL model, we will get even better things. Again, this all goes back to just understanding how to prompt the model that you're actively using. This holds true across any stable diffusion fine tune and especially across other models like Dolly and Midjourney. The prompts are not gonna work the same across different systems. You have to really understand what has been trained into the model for you to use it well as an expert. And this is where concept adapters come in. Because you can train concept adapters yourself, you can really understand what concepts you are injecting into the model. For this demonstration, I'll use one that has a pretty significant and drastic visual effect, which is going to be our Pixel Art XL model. 
And the pixel art Excel model, as you can imagine, is just trained to generate pixel art. And this will augment the model that we have selected with concepts that have been trained into the system with a tag of pixel art. One thing to note with concept adapters like LoRa's is that there is a relationship between the LoRa and the model that it was originally trained on top of. If you imagine the concept adapter like a wrapper around the model that extends and enhances certain concepts that are already trained in, taking off that wrapper and putting it on a different model that is shaped in a different way will still push those concepts into the model, but there will likely be some quality deterioration because the underlying model just has a different set of assumptions that don't map to what the LoRa was trained on. So it's really important to understand the base model that you use for training a LoRa because the LoRa is not a completely independent model. It is an adapter that is built specifically for a certain base model. Now that doesn't mean there isn't any portability for LoRa's. If two models are very similar in nature, the LoRa should work pretty well on that new model, but it's good to understand that that relationship exists so that you don't make assumptions about how portable your LoRa is. If you're training a LoRa or concept adapter on a model that you do not have access to, for example, proprietary models that are hosted on online services, that LoRa will only really work as well as you train it on that service, reducing its flexibility and portability. This is why when we work with businesses to train models on their intellectual property, we focus on ensuring that they have an openly licensed base model that they can train on top of. So let's see what happens when we add the term uh, pixel art style as a prefix to this prompt. Uh, we've got our pixel art Laura here. We've got a fixed seed, so we'll expect to see something that looks somewhat similar to this, but in our pixel art style, since we've injected that concept in. So we can see that there are a lot of similar elements between our images, but now we've kind of overridden the style with a very strong pixel art aesthetic. Now, if we go back to our anime model and we go ahead and use the same settings that we used for that and add a pixel art style to the beginning. We notice a pretty striking difference between the two pixel art images. This again goes back to that concept of a wrapper pushing the concepts that are already in a certain model towards the pixel art style. In the case of the anime model, the notion of chibi anime styles and kind of the bigger heads has resulted in a pixel art style that more effectively maps to that kind of anime base concept. Whereas with the Juggernaut model, we kind of have one of those more pseudo-realistic 16-bit pixel characters that look like you might see them from a 90s point-and-click adventure. Using concepts to extend base models and switching between base models that really work for your project are very powerful ways of turning AI image generation from a process where you feel like you're rolling the dice to get something that works for you into a tool that you can repeatedly use in your workflows. Hopefully this was helpful on breaking down how models and concept adapters like Laura work. Give it a like if you learned something and we'll see you on the next one. <laughs>